Well, hello. I'm glad you're joining me today in graphing power functions that do not have non-negative integer exponents. So our first function, f of x is equal to 3 times the square root of x. That is a power function because I can write that as f of x is equal to 3 times x to the 1 half power. So I can write it in the form of f of x is equal to a times x to the n where I've got a number times x to a number power. Now how do I go ahead and graph this? Well when I look at it it's a little bit more comfortable to graph it in the format that it was originally presented that f of x is equal to 3 times the square root of x. Now remember over the reals the square roots are only defined for non-negative numbers. So my domain of this is including zero and then off to positive infinity. And that helps me figure out what values I want to plug into a table to get some coordinate points on the graph and then to graph it. So since my domain is starting at zero and off to infinity, I will substitute 0 in for x and then looking at the function it's the square root of what I put in for x. So I would love to put in numbers that are perfect square numbers so that I have nice points to graph. So let's also put in 1 and then after that let's put in 4. And a lot of times students will ask well how many values should you put in and you want to get like 3 to 5 of anything that's not linear of well chosen points. So let's go ahead and also put in 9 to get just another um, point there. So when I'm looking at these, if x is equal to 0, this would be 3 times the square root of 0. Well, square root of 0 is 0 times 3 is 0. How about if x is 1? Well, that would be 3 times the square root of 1. Square root of 1 is 1. 3 times 1 is 3. How about if x is 4? That would be 3 times the square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 3 times 2 is 6. And then finally, if x is equal to 9, I have 3 times the square root of 9. Square root of 9 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. So now, looking at these, I can plot the points. I have 0, 0. I have right 1 up 3. I have right 4 up 6 and then I have right 9 so here's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 just on the um, outskirts there and then a little bit off the graph if I go up 9. Then connecting these I get my graph. Alright, how about the next one? f of x is equal to 4 times the cubed root of x. Well, cubed roots are valid for all real numbers. So my domain for this one is from negative infinity to infinity. So I do want to represent both the negative values input for x as well as positive. So then again, knowing that this, looking at what the function does, it is the cube root of whatever I put in. So I want to put in perfect cube numbers. And also this can be written as 4 times x to the 1 third power. So again it is also a power function. Now cube, perfect cube numbers. Um, perfect cube numbers would be like 0, 1, 8, and then also negative 1 and negative 8. And I like to put them in the x column from smallest at the top down to biggest at the bottom. Right, so now let's calculate our values. 4 times the cube root of negative 8. Well, the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. And then negative 1. 4 times the cubed root of negative 1. Cubed root of negative 1 is negative 1. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Plugging in 0 for x 
cubed root of 0 is 0, 4 times 0 is 0. Plugging in 1 for x, cubed root of 1 is 1, 4 times 1 is 4, and then plugging in 8 for x, cubed root of 8 is 2, 4 times 2 is 8. So notice here that if I just would have plotted the points negative 8, negative 8, 0, 0, and 8, 8, I would have had a misrepresent misrepresentation of what the graph actually does. So that's why you want to make sure you get a um, lot of points that you can generate and plot so that you get a better indication of what the graph looks like. So negative 8, negative 8 is a little bit off my graph, but it's about down here. And then negative 1, left 1, down 4 is here. And then 0, 0, 1, 4, so right 1, up 4, and then 8, 8. So 5, 6, 7, 8 and then up 5, 6, 7, 8, so there. And as I then connect these, I get that graph. All right, then lastly, we have f of x is equal to 2 over x to the third. I can write this function as 2 times x to the negative 3 power. So it is a power function, but its exponent is negative 3. So it is one that does something a little bit different than when I have non-negative exponents. Now the domain of this is all reals except 0 because we can't plug 0 in for x. I would get a 0 in the denominator of the fraction. So this is negative infinity to 0 union 0 to infinity with parentheses at the 0 to show that I cannot use that as a value on my table. So here we are going to plug in different values of x and I'm going to cube them and take 2 and divide by that cube and I can't put 0 in here so I'm just going to just like show that I can't do that on my table. But I could put let's say negative one half or negative one, positive one half, positive one, those sorts of values for x. And then definitely you could put more in, but these are the ones that I'm going to show as examples. Right, so plugging in negative one, I have two divided by negative one cubed. Well, negative one cubed is negative one, two divided by negative one is negative two. Now be careful on plugging in the negative one-half in the denominator. You're going to have two divided by negative one-half cubed is negative one over eight. But when you divide by a fraction, you have to keep the numerator the way it is and multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So this is actually going to give me two times a negative eight, which is a negative sixteen. We can't plug zero in. When we put one half in, I have two divided by one half quantity cubed, which is two divided by one eighth, which gives me positive 16. And then when I substitute one in for x, I have two over one cubed. One cubed is one, two divided by one is two. So I have negative one left one, down 2 and I have left 1 half down 16 so it's like way down here and then I have right 1 half up 16 so like way up here and then right 1 up 2 and if you were to put in let's just see what's happening on this other side let's for example put in um, 4 then that would be 2 over 4 cubed. So that's 2 over 64 or 1 over 32. 
and if I put negative 4 in I would have negative 1 over 32. So as I'm at 4 I'm just really really close to the x-axis but above it and then if I were to put in negative 4 I would be really really close to the x-axis but on the negative side. So as I connect these I get this graph. So there are three different examples of how you can get the graph of power functions if their exponents are different than non-negative integers.